This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, if there ever was a Santa Claus, he'd be nothing <laughs> like Bear. Always giving. He'd be nothing like Larry Bubbles Brown. I come down the chimney with a big bag of depression. So. Yeah, yeah, you'd be passing out uh, uh, disdain. <laughs> that that will be one thing you'd be passing out. Uh, Prozac. <laughs> Prozac. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, we're getting to that time of the year. Uh, it's almost almost Xmas, as I spell it, because I'm Jewish and I don't have to spell it with Christ in the name. And it's uh, it's Christmas time. And uh, I, I have you uh, are you do you give presents to people? I mean, do you have? I many? don't. I don't celebrate Christmas. The best thing I like about Christmas was the uh, used to do those great Christmas shows at the Fairmont. Yep. Yep. Those are wonderful. At the Venetian Room. Yep. Yeah, we had Dick Bright, and uh, it was just those were just such great nights. Well, it just I did it because it was an old-fashioned form of radio, you know. Yeah, was, yeah, with the music and uh, never and uh, yeah, it was like a variety show. And the live studio audience and all of that, you know. Um, but of course, the Venetian Room wasn't made for radio, you know. But we managed to turn a pretty good show out up there. And we did it every year, I think. Uh, when did it first start? I'm trying to remember when we first did it. I first think. one I did with you was, uh, let's see, De- December of 87. Yeah. 87? Yeah. Well, it's the first one I did, and I think that's the first one you did at the Fairmont. I think. I don't know if that was the first one. But anyway, it was. It was everybody looked forward to it. Everybody loved it. You know, and we called supper with Schwartzman, and uh, uh, because breakfast with Bennett, BB, SS, yeah, yeah, supper with <laughs> Schwartzman worked, and we used to just bring in people, uh, and we in one case we almost killed certain members of our audience. Do you remember that incident? No. Oh. <laughs> This was what we would do. Is we it was of course for the audience. We did it every year for the audience who could come. It was free. You came to the the Venetian room. You could buy drinks. I think, you know, you were allowed to do. You could do that, but you had to pay for them, obviously. But the admission was free, and uh, you got this really big show. But the other reason we did it was for sponsors. In other words, our advertising uh, guys would go out and pass out tickets to all the advertisers to come to the show. So this one year, we decided that we were going to go to all the agency people, most of whom were in L.A., and put them on a plane and bring them up to the show. Hey, good deal for an advertiser, right? You get a free plane trip to San Francisco, you see a great show, and then you fly back home. Oh, okay, I know what happened. Yeah, okay, you know what happened. Like so what happened was some guy decided that he was going to hijack a plane. And he hijacked a plane that was coming up to San Francisco just closely before our show. Uh, and uh, he hijacked the plane and had the guy plow it into the, uh, into the, into the earth. I mean, plowed into the ground. Everybody on the plane died. Well, these people were all supposed to be on that flight, but they didn't. We changed the flight to the flight right after it. And had we had the, <laughs> yeah. had we had all those people on that initial flight, we would have killed off about fifty percent of our advertisers. Uh, I remember yeah, it was a PSA flight. The PSA flight, right? It was a disgruntled worker that's how he got he got on the plane and he had a gun and he shot the two pilots mm-hmm. 
not knowing how to fly the plane himself, it just had nowhere to go but down. <laughs> I'm laughing. Oh, I'm one, laughing yeah. because our guys, our people, were on the next flight. So, uh, you know, pretty good, pretty good story. Uh, and I know that that uh, my boss at the time, Ed Cramp, went, "Oh my God, did we dodge a bullet on that one?" You know, and we were only trying to do the, a nice thing, you know, nice promotion for the advertisers. So. That was December seventh or eighth, nineteen eighty-seven. I remember that. Nineteen eighty-seven. So we were doing. We had done breakfast with Bennett's before that, I think. So uh, that was the first one I'd done at the Fairmont. Where possibly you did. Eighty-six might have been the first year. Eighty-six, because I started at uh, at Live One Hundred Five at eighty in eighty-seven, I think. Uh, February eighty-six. February eighty-six. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Wow, you were how do you rem I can't believe you remember these things. I remember you came back it was a big deal. <laughs> yeah, uh what day of the week was it? <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Probably I, a Monday. I, I'll say Monday. I'll say Monday. <laughs> no, the thing about Larry, we've we've established this before, is Larry, if you give him a date, uh um oh, I don't know. Uh, I was born December eighteenth, nineteen thirty-nine. What day of the week was it, Larry? That was a Monday. See, now I trust you. I have not gone back to the calendar to see if that's true, but I mean, you know, that's amazing. But you have I'll a look up. Uh, you can ask Siri, but I think it's. Uh, and I was looking at. Uh, well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. As Echo, what? Day of the week was December eighteenth, nineteen thirty nine. December eighteenth, nineteen thirty nine was on a Monday. You're right. See? Yeah. See? Larry's right. You have a process though that you do it with, right? Yeah, I remember a lot of dates from when I grew up and I know that the calendar repeats every twenty eight years. When you said nineteen thirty nine, I looked at nineteen sixty seven. You looked at did you look at it? I d I didn't virtually see it, but yeah, I remembered something, and uh, you're, it's kind of funny because my mother's birthday is your birthday, so. Okay, all right, that's fine. Now, you see, I just had a dizzy spell here. See, what, what is this with me? I have no idea. It's weird. Anyway, uh, <laughs> let's just go on here. Um, so what happens after we die, Larry? Uh, this, is a, this is a great Christmas themed show with you right now. Okay. W.C. Field said we only pass through here once, so I think he's probably right. Yeah? You think so? Yeah. It'd be, uh, my worst fear is there is an afterlife, and it's worse than this one. Because I was watching a documentary with. Again, Morgan Freeman, because he it's the law. You have to get Morgan Freeman to narrate your series. The best narrator in the world. And it was about, it was, it's about uh, space and things like that. And they were talking in terms of Mars 23 billion years ago. Okay? And I'm thinking, 23 billion years ago. Hmm. How insignificant am I in the whole scheme of things? You know, we're we're this little fleck, this little speck, this dot, this pinpoint dot in the history of mankind. It isn't even a dot; it's like a very faint dot. You know, and and so, is that all there is? You know. Yeah, I think so. That's why uh, Dana Carvey told me once. He always makes the fun of John Love. I think Love is just grousing about something, and Dana said to him. John, do you realize uh, after we're gone, there's going to be a billion years after us? <laughs> Love goes, well, then this all means nothing. <laughs> yeah, well, that's exactly the point. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'd like to be here to see man land on Mars. But that probably will not happen during my lifetime. If I live to be 100, maybe I might see it. Okay? But yet kids being born today will see it. And I'm jealous of them, you know. So I couldn't, can't stand them now because when they do a podcast, they get more better numbers than I do. But you know, I mean, kids born today, 
are going to see a bunch of stuff, but you know they they're not going to see a bunch of stuff when they die. But I just wonder why am I just flopped down here for now eighty three years? Okay, eighty three years of as of my birthday. Um, you know, eighty three years ago, why was I flopped down here? And then when I go, I just I was just part of this. You know, I didn't yeah, do seems, you know it. it didn't, people don't want to believe it can be pointless, but maybe life is pointless. Is it pointless? I mean, or you know, are we practicing for something bigger? I don't know. You know, I mean, I I'd, I'd like to think that there is some some uh, existence after this one, but I don't believe it. And you know, I always was very jealous of people who were like, "Oh, I believe in God, and I'm going to die, and I'm going to go meet Unc see Uncle Henry again." You know, going to go see my dad again. And all that yeah, man. because if you truly believe that, you're actually kind of happy. <laughs> yeah, they're very happy, and then they die, and they they, they can't really say. They won't know. <laughs> what, they won't know. If they're wrong. They don't know. Nobody can say to them, "Hey, you know something? Uh, you were you were right here." You know. Uh, well, you worry about missing us landing on Mars, but uh, look at uh, look at all the stuff you've seen that people that died even 80 years ago having amazing shit you've seen but my father never saw my career really get good you yeah know? i mean um my mother did uh but my father didn't uh but i mean i just i just wonder you know especially at my age you start thinking about these kind of things because i i death scares me because when you die i can't conceive of not existing you know um and and i'm just wondering do we exist on some other plane i mean i i really don't understand this you know and if we are existing on another plane did we exist once before on another plane and i don't remember it i don't even remember do you remember being born no, so that's what no. death will be like. It'll be like all the time before you were born. Well, that's what my father used to say. I said, I'm afraid of death. This was when I was a kid, right? I'm afraid of death. And he said, don't be afraid of it. I said, why? He says, you've been there once before. Yeah, you've already experienced Yeah, that. before you were born. And I go, okay. Now I go to bed, put my head on the pillow, and I'm thinking about what the fuck was it like before I was born? <laughs> you know. There was a point at well, which... Well, I wonder you, what the uh, great philosophers uh, say about it. Well, you know something? A lot of the great philosophers are mixed up because they were especially created in a certain time of a lot, a lot of uh, uh, religion, okay? And so they had a hard time, I think, even asking themselves this question for fear they'd be considered a heretic, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And burned... Alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't, I you know, I really, I really wonder what, you know, it, it, I constantly think about it. You know, um, I have certain theories on how we might exist past this existence, and that's only based on the thing called string theory, in which there are several different dimensions of which we exist in all of them. That's scary, isn't it? Yeah, I think I've heard something about that. Now, it doesn't mean I was, I was a, I'm a radio announcer in another dimension, but I exist in another dimension. And that between all these dimensions is a little space. Uh, I don't think they have a name for it, but it's like a little gap between these dimensions. And I'm thinking that, uh, you know, I mean, if, uh, if there is a hell, it's because you slip into one of these spaces and can't get out. Wow. Isn't that heady for you, huh? Gonna yeah. Think, gonna think about that tonight when you're going to sleep? No, but they... Did you write out your Christmas cards? We actually have bought uh, the, the, um, uh, the theory of a mega universe, Okay. Uh, as to how many dimensions there are, it's all debated. Uh, the one I always heard was seven. I don't know how they came up with seven, but whatever. And that in those seven dimensions, we all we all exist. You, there's another Bubs. If you can imagine this, 
That's uh, right. And he may have a life. That that's what's really scary. <laughs> you know. And and that there's another Bubs and there's another Alex and there's another world out there existing in the same now I'm wondering if all of a sudden I die. Do I go to another dimension or does that dimension disappear? You know, I started to think about it and I went, you know, when I die, the whole world dies with me. Because there isn't any world out there if I don't see it, if I don't, uh, uh, right. you know, um, have a, a feeling that it's out there. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that maybe this is all, a fig- this whole life has been a figment of my imagination. In which case, I have a lousy imagination. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Why didn't we come up with something better than this? Well, have you ever come up with any theories? I mean, you must have spent time lying in bed worrying about this, right? I do, and I thought about uh, the thing that kind of bent my brain when I was a kid. I, I tried to think about the universe, and there, there had to be a beginning. And just when I, my brain actually hurt when I tried to think about how could that be possible? It, how was, did this come out of nothing? You want your brain know. to hurt a little more? Yeah. <laughs> On this Morgan Freeman documentary, they were talking about 25 billion years ago. There was nothing. And they, they talk, he talked about how it all became something. You know, the, the universe is expanding. And at one point, the universe was nothing. And then there was a big bang. And it started expanding and expanding. It's still expanding. I know this, you have to take this on science. No, it is, and it was, we're li- we literally, if that is true, we, we're living in the middle of an explosion. Yeah, that's a very good way of putting it. But anyway, so um, uh, the, there's this expanding universe, and that happened 25 million years ago. But prior to 25 million years ago, now think about this, there was nothing. Now, can you yeah, even... Yeah, when you, I try to think about nothing, that's just, I, I can't get my head around Yeah, it. well, that's that's the same way I feel about death. I can't get a, wrap my mind around what it's like not to exist. Okay? After, I'm, you know, it's a lousy joke God played on us by allowing us to enjoy existence on whatever level we enjoy it, some more than others, Okay? But we get to enjoy existing, and then all of a sudden it's taken away from you. When, when you've spent, you know, 80, 90 years doing it. How cruel is that of a God? Very cruel, yeah. You know? I mean, um, I, I, you know, and, and then they talk about, oh, well, in science, someday people will live to be 150. And I'm going, oh, God. You know, what, <laughs> is, is that going to smell or what? You know? <laughs> because I have a thing that's happening to me now as I've gotten older. Folks, this is what happens when you get older. This is something that I've never talked about before, and I think it's very important for me to tell you. But I've noticed it lately. Every time I get out of bed, I fart. <laughs> There's some kind of gas that emits involuntarily from my butt when I get up out of bed. Thank you I very much. That yet. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just this. Uh, I, Marjorie and I, both on each side of our bed, have a spray can full of, of uh, air freshener. <laughs> so that if she hears me fart, she goes, get, get, you, I heard that, and then I have to go get the can of, de- of, of, of uh, air spray, and I spray it around. And that's two old people. That's, that's us getting old together. We have a matching citrus-flavored air freshener. So, uh, that's love. I want, yeah, I want people to know that's what it's like to get old. That's (laughs) that's romance, you know. Uh, So, what the hell? Anyway, you you been dating at all in the last? No, not at all. I think everything everything crashed with the pandemic. So. Really? I mean, were you dating yeah. prior to that? 
I would occasionally see somebody, but yeah, now it's just nothing. And those people aren't around now? I mean, what do they do? Die, not, die from COVID? Left, so many people have left here, and then I think getting older, you get uh, you're not on anyone's radar, so. Well, yeah. Um, um, I was well. I was still on some kind of radar because I married Marjorie. But a good woman, so you're a lucky man. Well, I married Marjorie uh, when I w hit uh, like seventy. Okay. Okay. So you know, I mean it, uh, and I was doing some dating. I was doing less dating, uh, only because I didn't have a lot of money here when I first got back, and it took a while for me to have enough money that it, I could actually go out and date. You know. I, I, here's what happened. I used to go out with women who didn't drink. Okay? My wives didn't drink. My girlfriends, most of them, didn't drink. All of a sudden, I started going out with a couple of women who drink. Do you know how much more dinner costs when you're buying dinner? Oh, my God. When, yeah, when they, double it. When they drink, it's not double it, but it's at least a third. Because, like, uh, no woman I know who drinks has one drink. No, okay. it's just, uh, it's, you'd rather see them order lobster than the drink. They have, like, two, and that's 25 bucks right there. Yeah. It's such a waste of money. So I, I wasn't used to having to pay for drinks for dinner. You know? I mean, to this day, Marjorie and I go out to dinner. The bill comes to $100. At least 25 of it is, is liquor. And I don't drink, so it doesn't matter. Of course, what they did, for people like me, they made the Cokes really expensive. You know, you still spend like $4 for a glass yeah, of Yeah, 4 or 5 for a Coke. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which always pissed me off because I'm going, hey, I'm not drinking. This is not alcohol, right? In Europe, they used to, uh, they charge $4 for a Coca-Cola. It's considered like you're buying a drink, Okay. And they serve yeah. it in the small little glass Coca-Cola bottles that are like six ounces. You remember those? And as a kid, I used to go through a case of those every day. Yeah, they, yeah and they, they take those, and they empty it into your glass, and they go, okay, there's your $4 worth of Coke. Now, oh, if I gosh. went to the store next door, the bodega, and I bought like a half gallon of Coke, it would cost me $1.25. Mm -hmm. you know, but that's how they make their money. You know, so. Yeah. They didn't ever made money off of me from booze, you know. They me like, either. I never drank. So. Yeah. And then, have you been to restaurants lately and seen the cost? God. Oh, even everything. So even fast food is getting expensive. Is it really? Yeah. Do you eat fast food? Occasionally, I get uh, some places have a good grilled chicken sandwich. So I'll eat that. So. What, what's that? McDonald's. Carl's Jr. Carl's Jr. has a good chicken sandwich. Oh. I didn't know that. Yes, and McDonald's is a deep fried chicken sandwich, so I don't want that. And, oh, okay. And uh, Mc yeah. McDonald's charges a dollar for their cokes. The other Burger King and Carl's Jr. three twenty nine for a small coke. So really? Yeah, it's a real to rip off. Oh, that's that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Wow. Little pansies like us who don't drink, we're being taken to the cleaners now. I, I just can't believe the Coca-Cola would cost that much. You know, it doesn't cost them that much. They just got the syrup and the and the seltzer, and they oh, combine the two. I always heard that was virtually pure profit, Cokes. And the... Yeah, but, I mean, are you going to tell me that, you know, a keg of Coke is going to cost them $100 or something? No. no. They're ripping us off. So, Well, you know what really rips you off? Popcorn at the movie theater. Now, oh, anything I, in the theater, I don't yeah. care how prices have gone up. That's just popcorn, okay? And they, how much for a bu bucket of corn? Six bucks, seven. I don't even know what it is now. I've been to a movie theater in two and a half years. Yeah, it's probably six bucks, and candy bars are like four bucks. Oh, I would spend about 15 bucks getting all the, you know, stuff for the movie. Uh, but I would get a bucket of corn, and we would get two sodas, and that would come to about 15 bucks. Yeah. I mean, well, they always said that's how the theater owners made their money because they didn't get that big a cut on the uh, film, so but, I don't know. Yeah, they make a bigger cut the longer the film is there, but the first couple of weeks they don't make anything off the films. Nothing? Okay. Yeah, Jeez. so they're, they're hyping the popcorn and, the, and stuff yeah. like that, you know. 
And then it's a lousy movie, but at least the popcorn was still good. You know, <laughs> that's all you can That's the only place about. popcorn ever tasted good was at a movie. Well, listen, I want to wish you and yours a very... I want to wish you a uh, yes, and I wish you a, a great Christmas, Hanukkah, and uh, also a birthday. Oh, yes. Well, I already had my bad birthday by the time this runs, so thank you for well, wishing Well, your birthday me. is... That's kind of a jip, though. You got... Uh, yeah. You got your birthday and Christmas uh, so close together. You yeah. only get you don't get double presents. <laughs> and I'll see you after the uh, year changes into yet another. Yes, one. if we roll into twenty three, uh, we will see each other again. Did you ever think you were going to live this long? I didn't know. You no, know, he's been thinking he was going to die every day since the day he was born. Anyway, I used to think that in high school that I was going to die quite young. I don't know why. But. Yeah, well, you, you lost your chance, ladies lost and gentlemen. Bad, Larry yeah. Bubbles Brown. We'll see you next year, Larry. You got it, Alex. Bye-bye. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. How are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome. i got to do a few things here. Let me just uh, put this up here and up here. Okay, there we go. Hey, you notice the background? A little, little festive. Okay, I thought I'd get festive. All right. I'm sorry if I'm overly festive, but look at me. It's I really shouldn't put that there because it's so freezing. I'll, I'll, I'll explain to my audience why it's freezing for, in a moment. Uh, but uh, let me see here. Let me see what participants I have here. Okay, I have a bunch of them, so let me just go get them. Get them to come in here, and uh, let me see here. I'm I'm using uh, I'm using that, uh, uh, but I'm using a different background for myself here. <laughs> you know, I could make it the snowy one if I wanted to, but I I, I decided that would be annoying for a whole hour. So, <clears throat> what? Who was coughing? Surprised me. Oh yes, you're. You almost didn't think you could make it tonight, right? You had internet problems. Yeah, it's working now, so hopefully it lasts. Well, here's a new uh, new feature of the uh, Alex Bennett uh, Gabnet program. It's uh, a little thing we call, How Cold Is It Where You Are? <laughs> um, uh, uh, for instance, Jeff, how cold is it where you are? Mm, right now it's seven. It's seven. Well, yeah. right down here in New York, we're having a heat wave. <laughs> it's 10. Okay. Yeah. And uh, let's see here. Josh, you've been having internet problems, so that must mean there's some snow out there. Yeah, we got a big snow and then uh, really cold. I don't uh, like how he, little... how he minimizes things. We didn't have a big snow. How, how, yeah. bi how big was the big snow? We got about four or five inches, but... Um, the winds have been so high that you can't really tell. I mean, parts of the yard, there's a big area where it's all grass, and then it's like two feet high up against the house. So yeah, yeah, that's what they said we got. I don't know how they measured that. But yeah, I mean, well, yeah. And uh, 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 let's see here. We also have Alan. How are you, Alan? I I'm doing good. I have to leave at 8.30, but uh, I'll wave goodbye. Anyhow, Why do you um, have to leave at 8.30? i got to do some stuff for my mother. Friday night stuff for your mother I, yeah I mean she what are you a, are you a mama's boy is that what this is all about <laughs> no 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 I mean, somebody's got to you know feed her once in a while from a restaurant uh, she wants a McDonald's chicken sandwich funny you're talking about that <laughs> yeah we Larry. were we just we we're talking I, about I heard it with, it. Uh, Larry yeah I heard he, it he likes uh, the uh, chicken sandwich so yeah but not from McDonald's yeah. It's deep yeah fried but she does she does yeah, you know you're always you're always saying you're coughing and stuff. Mm -hmm. You brought up something with Larry Bubbles Brown that might be causing the coughing. You're laying in bed and you're spraying the <laughs> citrus air stuff, and that's known to cause asthma. Is it really? Yes, I have some of them too. I have the orange orange oils, but I tell you, if you get that on some place that's sensitive to your skin, it burns. So yeah, it's it's, it's hard on your lungs. Really? Oh, okay, I'll tell Marjorie that. Maybe I can get her. Yeah, make sure, sure she sprays it the other. Well, direction. no, she no. She's just going to have to get used to my farts. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> you 
Yeah, we we, we we had a new we had a new rule about the farting. Okay, is yeah. that if you fart in bed, you have to spray the orange spray. But if you're standing up, you don't have to spray. Oh, I thought you had to spray lemon if you're standing up. I don't know why. Maybe because it's aimed at the floor or something like that. I haven't figured it out yet. You know. That stuff's pretty potent. You only a little By spray the way, you'll hear subjects like this when uh, Josh takes over for an hour at, uh, at midnight our time here. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, he'll be talking. Well, you be ta You have a whole uh, about fifteen minutes on farting, don't you, tonight on your show? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> and uh, well, you know, yeah. uh, and and uh, also uh, with us is Charlie Wallace, ladies and gentlemen. And what is your what does your shirt say tonight? Well, um, it says the bi the basic element of humor, elements of humor, sarcasm. Oh, I see. Calcium uh, and samarium. Oh, I see. Sarcasm. That's just very good. Where very do good. Where do you find these things? <laughs> I don't, dude. Is there? I get, I get them on Amazon. You know, last <laughs> night we found out about Charlie a little more about Charlie that he, for instance, speaks Russian. Okay, and that he was recruited by the CIA but didn't take the job. Right. You, you well, were you're afraid of what your friends would think, right? You remember the CIA? Yeah, I couldn't face my friend. That was back in the '70s, and you know, well, CIA I mean, was doing all kinds of awful things. Well, there are awful things that the CIA does, but there's some very good mm -hmm. things the CIA does. For instance, they collect money every year for St. Jude's Hospital. I heard that one somewhere. I don't know, but oh. no, no, it's <laughs> it's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> No, I mean, uh, boy, I don't know if I were offered a job by the CIA. You know, the only reason I would join it was to find out what all the secrets are. <laughs> you know, uh, you think they're going to tell you everything? Well, I'll tell you. I asked, I asked uh, Jimmy Carter this question when I interviewed him. One of the couple of occasions I did interview him, and I said to him. You know, the one thing about being president is that the day you become president, they sit you down in a room and they tell you all the secret stuff. And he says, yeah. I said, did any of what they told you scare you? And he said, most of it. He said, it scared the living <laughs> daylights out of me. You know, so I said, yeah, but of course, you can't tell me whether they're aliens in Area 59 or whatever that place is out there. But he, he said that, yes, no, it just, it, it, it scared him when he found out all the stuff we were doing around the world. So that's the only reason I want to become president of the United States is so I can learn that stuff and then tell all America what it is, you know? But anyway. I don't want to know. Well, you would have found out. You had your chance, you know? Are you? Uh, do you know? I mean, did they did they sit down with you and say uh, before we even approach you with this, you cannot tell anybody about this? Oh, that was uh, right up front. Right up front, and you're telling <clears throat> me though. So can I now get no, killed? No, they didn't tell me. I, they said if you work for the CIA, you can't tell anybody what you're doing. Yeah, and how about well, after you leave the CIA? It's the same thing. I mean, I assume that what whatever is secret is secret whether you stay there or not yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. unless well, you're donald trump yeah well they just tell you what you need to know they don't tell you everything if you don't need to know it they don't tell you in other words if you're in this department uh, you get to know what you know for that department but you don't get yeah. to know what some other apartment no cool. department knows yep. i wonder what department you're in where you know everything i guess if you're the head of the cia yeah. And then again, I don't know that these people tell the head of the CIA everything, you know. So, uh, but I, uh, I, I often, you know, often wondered about the CIA and what it'd be like to be in the CIA and, you know, how dangerous a job it is. There are they have a whole wall of, of people who have been yeah. killed in service, you know. Yeah, they just have a star. They don't have their names because you, they can't tell you who they were. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. Anyway, so anyway, this is our um, our um, um, the show you wait for all year long. Boy, I'm hearing a feedback. <laughs> I'm hearing a feedback, a slapback, as we 
sometimes call it, and I don't know why, but let me see here. Are we... No, oh, there it is. It's still there. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. what the hell? You don't hear me now, and I don't hear that sound. Can you hear me okay, everybody? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, because I turned down something here that might have been causing a little bit of that, so it minimizes it. Anyway, mm-hmm. this is our big uh, Christmas show. Everybody waits for this all year long to hear the Jew do a Christmas show. Uh, and... Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it, you know, it, it, when you were kids, like for instance, Charlie, when you were a kid, did your parents tell you there was a Santa? Yo, oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And ha- how long was it before you realized you were being taken to the cleaners? Oh, I, I probably found, I'm the youngest, so I probably found out earlier than most people because my older brother and sister. Well, how'd you find out? How'd you find out? Well, basically my brother. Told me. <laughs> oh. Laughed at me for believing in Santa Claus. Oh, I see. But did he believe in Santa Claus at one time? I'm sure he did, because they told us. Because we I was. We sa- got two presents. We got a present from Santa Claus and a present from Mom and Dad. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. And so when you finally found out there was no Santa, they stopped giving you one of the gifts? Nah, they still kept giving them. Yeah, one. yeah. No, because I, I wondered about that. I see, because I'm, I'm not a Gentile, so I don't know how the telling your kid about Santa Claus, or when do you stop telling him there's a Santa Claus, or do you ever start telling him there's a Santa Claus? Like, for instance, uh, your kids, did you tell them there was a Santa Claus? I got kind of outvoted. My wife wanted to tell them there was a Santa Claus, so I felt guilty about lying to my kids, but, you know. Well, that's one of the big. I had to go along with her. That was one of the main questions on the questionnaire for the CIA employment: is Do you believe in Santa Claus? And if you don't, you don't get to join the CIA. (laughs) No, they send you to the FBI. Now, uh, what did you do about your kids, uh, Jeff? Did you ever tell them there was a Santa Claus? No. (laughs) Well, that didn't exist, huh? You crazy? I told them no. You told them no. Oh, okay. I mean, just flat out no. Yeah. Now, so what did they it's do the with it? Works. Uh, yeah. It's a guy on uh, at the store. <laughs> Wears funny clothes. Oh, oh, who? What? I, He's like if you go to Macy's, you're gonna see. Yeah. Oh, Santa the guy Claus. who works at the department store. Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't think of him as an employee. I just thought of him as a fat <laughs> drunk who was out of work, except for two, a month a year. Santa's helpers. Santa's helpers? Yeah. I wonder at those department stores, I sh- if, if Kevin calls tonight, and I suspect he will, okay, I, I want to ask him the big question, and that is, does Santa get paid more for his job than the elves do? <laughs> well, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, haven't you always wondered about that? Santa's the boss. Of course he gets paid more. No, he's not the boss. At Macy's, he's not the boss. You know. Well, now, like, for instance, uh, Brian, Adri- I, Adrian, did she ever? Did you ever tell her there was a Santa Claus? Yes, yeah, she thinks there's Santa Claus. To this day? Yeah. She's only seven, yeah. What do you mean she's only seven? She's only seven. I mean, I, I think the expiration date on Santa would be like five. I told the other kids if they don't believe, then they're not getting gifts. So. <laughs> oh, 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 really? Yeah. But how do you tell those kids not to tell her? Shut the fuck up about it. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. It's pretty simple. Now, the day is going to come. There are going to be two time, big times in your life as a father, and I'm telling you this now because you, you're a father later in life. So you, you should... have so much experience. Well, I have experience by watching other people. Okay. Uh, uh, there are two important things that you're going to have to sit down with Adrian and tell her. One is all about the birds and the bees, right? Not my job. Oh, real? <laughs> it's it's it, okay. It's mom's job, right? I 
I've told <clears throat> Stephanie, who's 14, don't trust any guy because they will lie for anything. And when I say anything, I mean anything. That was my talk with Stephanie. Oh, so you did have a talk with her. With Stephanie. Yeah, with yeah, Stephanie. But why did you decide this one would be your wife's job? Or your, no, no, I won't I'll say wife, is a significant other. I'll tell Adrian the same thing after I get my lessons from Alan and Phil. Oh, I see. Okay. And are you going to tell her about the birds and the bees? You can let mom do that too. Mom can do that part. Uh, I just tell them don't trust guys. That's all. Don't trust guys. That's very good. Because they will. How did you put it? Do you put it in a nice way or did you just say they do anything to get into your pants? <laughs> because he's from experience. Yeah. From, yeah. Well, you knew what you were like as a guy. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's why most fathers don't trust the guys that come to the doors because they know what they were like. Self-trained. Self-trained, exactly. And that's why when they go out to hang out with their friends and they say they're going to go do something, you know, I was there too. I, yeah, I told my dad, oh, yeah, their parents are home. Yeah, their parents are home, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but now, and yeah. now we have trackers for everything. So I can I can see... Like, I can see where my son is, right? Well, I can see where my son's phone is right now. Yeah. And if I knew, if I was my son, I would go to work and leave my phone at work and go hang out with my friends and go do whatever I want yeah, to do. You should just you know? not, you should know how to turn off Find My Phone. No, this is their apps for it. Oh, know? their apps. Oh, and did you secretly put that app on his phone when he wasn't looking? No, no, no. He knows it's there, so that's what I'm saying. That if I was his age, I would know how to get around all that stuff. Too. How did How did you tell him that you were putting a tracker on his phone, and not having him get mad about it? No, he wanted it because we kept asking him, "Where are you going? What time are you gonna be home?" And calling him, "Where are you?" Texting him, "Where are you?" So he said, "You know, there's a well." Stephanie said, "There's a tracker for that." So then they they hooked it up. Oh, yeah, and it's also I think it's for their own safety too. You know. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, Mr. Sarcasm, yes. <laughs> no, the kids, we told our kids, you just won't get a phone unless you have an app on it. Mm. You want a phone? The app's got to be on it. And how does this app work? Is it just it just tells you where the person, where they are, right? Oh, yeah, just like GPS. But, yeah. I mean, I know where Marjorie is all the time because of, well, no, because we I have it on her phone <laughs> made so that I can see where she is. Yeah. So I'm, she she can't see where I am. However, I haven't set it up on my. You can phone. see where your phone is. She can't see where you are. Yeah. Oh, I see. Unless you put a GPS tracker under the skin. Yeah. Well, I mean the 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 I, the phone is a tracker. I mean, if they left their phone at home, he wouldn't be able to find out where they are. Right. You know. So. That's why you put it under the skin. And, and Josh, he, he, like me, you don't have any kids, so you right. never had to tell any of them. Would you, If you did have a kid, would you tell them there was a Santa in the beginning? I mean, when they're a little baby and so on? No, I don't think so. I doubt. Yeah. The big, I don't think so. The big thing now are these uh, things called Elf on a Shelf. <laughs> and... Um, I just don't want, I wouldn't want to give my kid any kind of like toy that snitches on him. You know, <laughs> gotta be good. The elf on the shelf is watching. <laughs> I felt this whole Santa thing mm. anyway was a way of controlling children. You know, exactly. you know, if you're not good, <laughs> eh, Santa's not going to come and visit. Nah. What, yeah. It's a way to watch out. Parents. Huh? Parents got, it's a way of controlling parents. Parents have got to go shopping, got to spend money. Oh, God. For the kids. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I don't have any kids, and I still spend a lot of money. You know, I got this. I got my I got my super to tip. I got the insist, his assistants to tip. What? You know? Why? Uh, huh? Why do, you, why do you tip them? Why do I tip them? Yeah. So that when something breaks in the apartment, they'll come up and fix it. <laughs> You know, I mean, my, my, I give him, oh, about 300 bucks a year. Okay. Wow. The super. And how many, and how many, how many apartment, how many apartments are there? There are a hundred in this building. So even if he got an average of a hundred dollars. He doesn't free. see that. Most of these people don't tip him. I bet they don't, you know, but I learned a long time ago, you tip the super 
because you'll get a quicker response. A quicker response when someone's broken, he's up here, you know, unless he's really busy, you know, and and and, he, and but it, he usually takes care of everything that I need to have him take care of. So, you know, it, it's worth it. And also, I pay the guys at fifty bucks each who are like his assistants who take the garbage away in the morning. And, you know, general maintenance guys around the building. And uh, that's because they, you know, I think they should get something too. But uh, I would say, I wouldn't say, you know, in this building, how many people would tip the super? I don't think a hell of a lot. Mm. You know, because a lot of these people are here with very low rents. They've been here for 30 years when this place was a big crack house, you know. And I don't think they're used to tipping the... Uh, the uh, um, uh, the super, so you know, but just everywhere I've ever been, that's what you did, <clears throat> you know. So, so I have to pit do that, and then I have to get Marjorie a gift for the, this time of year, you know. What else do I spend money on? Christmas is just I got to spend some money, and I don't like spending money, especially at my age. I need every single penny I can lay my hands on, so. But anyway, uh, so anyway, we've run out. Well, that's our Christmas show. <laughs> See you next year. Yeah, you know. Um, well, you know something? If Kevin comes on tonight as Santa, and I think he probably will, don't you, Josh? I don't know. I haven't really heard from him much today. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Well, uh, you know. I don't know what he's doing. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that he will pay us a visit. And if he does, is Adrian home? Yeah, she. Uh, yeah, she's she, in the next She could year. talk to Santa. Yeah, because I I know he usually calls. So. Yeah, he, he's been most years. He's he's called, you know, but then again, I may have pissed Santa off this year. I don't know. <laughs> you know. Have yeah, so. you been naughty? <laughs> yeah, I've been naughty. Been nice. Uh, but anyway, uh, so uh, um, uh, on other uh, things that are happening. Uh, the July, the July, January 6th committee came out with their pamphlet. They're on an 800 page pamphlet. Is it 800 pages? Something like that? No, I didn't hear. And one of their recommendations is Donald Trump should never be allowed to run for public office ever again. Mm, I agree. That's one of the, well, that's just a recommendation. recommendation. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's still good. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it, it, it's it not very good stuff that's in there, you know. And I mean, of course, he says it's a, it's a, you know, it's a witch hunt, it's a, it's a Salem witch trial or whatever. He always says the same things over and over again. But the fact is, I mean, what he did was just terrible, just terrible. I mean, think about it. Do you, did you ever think you would live in America and have anybody try what he tried? Yeah. You know, it just goes, it goes beyond all comprehension. So, uh, well, I lived long enough to see it. Yeah. 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 Um, but anyway, so, well, that's another subject just went I flat. Mean, they, Let me see. What? They should probably seriously consider that option. I, you know, that's a, that's an option that was... You know, there's nothing wrong with using that. I know some people roll their eyes at that or whatever, but it's it's as constitutionally allowed as the next hundred things, you know, that are are in there that we do. So why not use it if if that's the case? Yeah, I but mean, I mean to say that he no. cannot run for president ever again. Yeah. Well, he right. tried to overthrow the government. Right. I mean, that's why it's in there, you know. Oh, picky, <laughs> picky, picky. I mean, it was, uh, you know, what I mean, and, and what people have to remember is that provision is in, you know, in case within one of the amendments, you know, which means that that particular provision was saw fit to be put in there by the people, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not by... People, this is not one of those ones where people can say, all oh, those guys that own slaves put that in there, or, you know, it doesn't yeah. have anything to do with today. No, it came way after that. Mm -hmm. That was put in by the people and the states and the Congress all together. 
the House, the Senate, the people, their consent, the state legislatures, you know, all via the people. So, I mean, so what's, you know. Well, did we have, did we have, no ex- no? do we have treason, uh, 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 treason in the Constitution? Yeah. Uh, it just has its mentions for, you know, particular punishments and things like that, mm-hmm. you know. So we thought it could happen. Well, sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, let's, you know, uh, I mean, you can go back and forth about uh, whether it was as bad as you, you know, we make it sound today with the joke. But let's not forget that the the people who wrote that certainly sat in a room and remembered Benedict Arnold. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, I mean uh, of all the things in his life that wounded Washington more than anything, the Arnold affair was probably the one that. Now, what uh, what did up. he do exactly? Well, he, he he was upset about his treatment uh, by the army and by the Congress mm-hmm. um, for the services that he thought that he rendered. Uh, he he fronted a bit of his own fortune to to field the uh, part of his men at times which was fairly common mm-hmm. during that period um, because the country was broke. He didn't felt he didn't feel like or think that he got the credit that he deserved. He didn't think that he was able to benefit financially enough given what he had sacrificed. So in the end, he decided that he could maybe get a better deal from the British because he was waning on whether or not this new idea of America was really going to be good because in his eyes, it wasn't working out so far. He was, in his mind, giving everything he could give and getting nothing back. So he, he sold plans to West Point, the defenses and things like that, what we now call West Point, you know, to the to the British and, and gave them information on how they could get, uh, you know, boats and things by for an invasion and stuff like that. And, and then, you know, went over to join the British and actually led troops against uh, um American, you know, patriot detach- mm-hmm. uh, forces. Uh, so he what? never led British regulars. Mm-hmm. Okay, he led loyalist, you know, militia and things like now, that. Now, beca- this, this was while yeah. America still wasn't a country, right? Yeah, right. right. This is right. This so is, how can you commit treason? How war. can you commit treason against a country that doesn't exist? Well, you really can't i guess i mean although at the time and we had declared our independence and mm-hmm. we were operating under basically a, a pact a confederation pact so mm-hmm. it was in you know there were things in that pact and you know you can commit treason against uh the army that you joined you know i mean when mm-hmm. he joined the army the continental army you know they signed agreements especially officers he was given a commission mm-hmm. you know in the continental army that said this, that, and the other, mm-hmm. you know, and he didn't hold up that, that end. I mean, you can it, just like desertion, you know, I mean, the same sort of, same sort of crime punishable by death. I mean, had they been able to capture Arnold, they would have. What, what happened? That, what happened? They didn't capture him, right? Correct. Where was he? You go back to England? Uh, he did after a while. He, I'm trying to remember the exact details of him. I don't know if he went to England and then came right back, but, you know, he stayed around the States on the British side in, you know, British safe territory and I think on a few ships for a while. And then he led some militia and things of that nature, uh, you know, and then, you know, ended up basically exiled or whatever. So, so you know. he, if they had caught him, would they have killed or shot him? No, he would have been hanged as a spy, as hanged. a traitor. You know, yeah. In those days, bullets were hard to come by. Yeah. yeah. I mean, his his British counterpart, his handler, if you will, was caught, you know, during the during the exchange, uh, the period, basically. And he was hanged. You know, John Andre was hanged as a as a British as a British spy. You know, so, wow. Right. I mean, that was the. Uh, you and know. and I mean, is Washington, it... Washington wanted him captured pretty bad. Uh hmm. Isn't it interesting, isn't it interesting that uh, Benedict Arnold's name has lived forever in infamy? In other words, to this day, we use that term as somebody who, like, betrays you. Oh, you're a regular Benedict Arnold, you know. Right. We don't forget that name. Right. Do you think we'll forget? Yeah, I mean, it was, you know. Do you think given enough time, Trump will be forgotten? 
Mm. Oh, heck no. I don't think he'll be forgotten. And what will he be remembered uh, as, though? A traitor? I, I think uh, that as time uh, goes on, I think it will be more negatively. I, I think that you will see... I mean, I really do. I'm not saying this because I don't like him. I mean, I think we know by now that I will give you what I was trained to do, which is a historical opinion. I mean, which is mm -hmm. hundreds of credits of you know, of training. I mean, I will, I will give it to you that way. Yeah. And I think that even some of our poor presidents, as time passes and information comes about and people who were in the moment forget and move on, whatever, or people much, much later take a look at it completely unattached to the mm -hmm. situation. They, they didn't have to live through it or vote for the guy or the woman or whatever. I think their reputation typically improves. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, someone always has to be ranked at the bottom, right? But there's always people trying to find nicer things to say about them mm -hmm. in the service of their country. I mean, just in our own little world right here, the second George Bush, okay, who I guarantee you, we probably all couldn't stand in, two, you know, 2005 and 2000. I mean, you know, I mean, hey, I can remember, God, this fucking guy driving me fucking crazy. You know what I'm saying? Okay, hey, listen. But Even before, now, we can probably look back yeah. and say, you know, he, he was kind of a decent person. I'll let you continue in a second, but I know that uh, that uh, Alan is itching to leave. <clears throat> oh, yeah. good. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, no, it's okay. It's not a problem. So I am going to leave. Everybody have a good Christmas. Stay safe and see you next year. Okay, we'll see you after on the, 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 the 4th of... Uh, December. Uh, of yes, December. January. 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 That's close yeah. enough. Yeah. All right. Take care. Okay. Have a happy Stay Christmas. Safe. Okay. Stay safe. Uh, Bye. And, Bye, Alan. and that leaves room for other people to call. Come on. We need more people. Yeah. Where are those 400 people that wish you happy birthday? I yeah. Where are the 400 people them. wish me happy birthday? Yeah. I reply to each single one of them and say, hey. You know, uh, hey, man. Who? who they, they, they always say, oh, wow. I used to listen to you back in Live 105. Yeah. Let's go now. Who who are we just who's just joined us, Jeff? That's not Santa. Wait a minute, your mic isn't on. Your mic isn't on. Hey Alex, it's Andrew, Jeff's son. Yeah, hi. We you had lunch with us, right? Many years ago. Right. Many years it was as many years ago. Is that what you're thinking it was? Many wasn't? years ago. Well, how many years ago was Don't it? Don't you love that phrase? It was maybe maybe five years ago. I think five years ago yeah. sounds well right. for you at yeah. your age. That's many years for me. That's just a blink <laughs> of the eye, you know. Uh, many years ago, do you have kids? <laughs> no, no, because we we're, were asking the question about did he it, when did he tell you there wasn't a Santa? <laughs> uh, he didn't tell me, but someone at school told me in kindergarten. <laughs> and how did you, it, yeah. To begin with, it's really a party pooper who does something like that, right? Oh, it was devastating. Was it devastating to you? It was devastating. How long I did felt it so stupid? And did you go home then and yell at him for not telling you there no, wasn't? I, th I think I kept it to myself. Well, he's Jewish, so it's not his responsibility. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But okay. yeah, that was tough. That was a hard day. See, that's what I would think would be so bad about telling your kid there is a Santa Claus, is the day you've got to tell that kid there isn't, or the day that kid finds out, and then oh, it is... Finds out. And how long did it take you to get over that? Um, or, or did you say to yourself... I'm, I'm hmm, still getting over well, it. Well, 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 <laughs> yeah. well, in fact, if it's, no, my, if, it's my, if it's my parents who have been lying to me, but they've also been giving me the presents in the name of Santa... Maybe yeah. if I want to keep the gold rush coming, I better just tell them I still believe in Santa Claus. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I was mad at my parents for that. I think I was uh, just sad that you know this benevolent magic man didn't really exist. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, just, well, uh, who? What did you feel worse, that or the first woman who dumped you? <laughs> The, the first the first woman who dumped me. You felt worse <laughs> about it. Okay, I'm just wondering, you know. Yeah, I wanted so, to put it on a scale, you know. 
Yeah. So just just to yeah. make it worse, Adrian I'm not and a big I, materialist. <laughs> what? Every year, so Adrian and I tomorrow we will go to Safeway and we'll get carrots with the leaves part mm-hmm. and cookies for Santa. So we leave those for him, and she leaves him a note. And they're magically and then, gone the next day, right? <laughs> Yes, but I, I leave it a little bit. Or there's there's always a little bit left, you know, to show that, you know, yeah. Yeah, I have the crumbs there, or the cookies. I just downloaded a, a movie uh, that uh, is, uh, I've, I've been wanting to see. It's Have you heard about this m- f- movie, Violent Night? Oh, Violent Night, yeah. no. Not yet. It's I haven't a, seen it. It's, a, it's an action film with Santa. It's, <laughs> it's a scary movie. Yeah, Not, I thought. Yeah, supposedly it's, he it's goes to. Movie, some, right? I haven't seen yeah, it yet, like but he goes to somebody's house, and this these people invade the house, and he's got to protect them against the invasion, and blah blah blah. And I'm going, boy, that's fun, you know. It sounds like a good I idea. I just did. I just watched two Christmas movies. <laughs> really, on the Hallmark Channel, perhaps? <laughs> no, I watched the George C. Scott Christmas Carol. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which was pretty good. And then I watched uh, Little Women from ni- the 1994 one. Really? With Winona Ryder. Yeah. Okay. And Susan How, the, is that a They're Christmas movie? I'll tell you, if I like Christmas movies, I think my favorite Christmas movie is either between A Christmas Story, which is That's the G- Gene Shepard film. Yeah, of course. Or one that we don't think of as a Christmas film, but it really is, Love Actually. Yeah, which yeah. is a great film and a great. Uh, How about Eyes Wide Shut, Alex? That's my favorite. That's Christmas your favorite movie. Christmas film. <laughs> Die Hard. Die Hard. Die Hard. Doesn't that Die. take place on Christmas? Yeah, yes, that's yeah. my favorite Christmas movie. Die Hard. Some Bruce of... is very adamant that it's not a Christmas movie, though, which is just like a huge bummer. Yeah. Well, well, wait a minute. It it, if it, place, it, it, it if it takes party, place it on happen. Christmas, yeah. then it's a Christmas yeah. movie. You know. Yeah, I saw I saw a clip of him at an award show once, and he was very, very adamant that it wasn't a Christmas movie. Or said as much in his speech. I thought that was kind of a bummer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another bad life. day. <sighs> yeah. Well, come on, folks. I also want more people calling because this show at at midnight is going to morph into uh, Josh's show. And I want him to have at least more than me as a, uh, online. I'll be there. Huh? You'll stick I'll around, stick Jeff? There. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll stick around. I know Neary he's, probably has to do. He's sitting next to the fireplace. He's very comfortable. That's right. It's nice and warm. I'll tell you something. <laughs> let me let me Reason tell you this. This is the, this is the sad thing I have to tell you about this apartment. So they had problems with the boiler downstairs a couple, about a, about a week ago. All of a sudden, the hot water was dripping out of the, out of the shower head, you know. Oh, okay. And, and they, they went down temporarily fixed it. They had to fix it completely. So they said today, yesterday and today, between the hours of 10 and 6 at night, there was going to be no hot water and no hot, because we have radiators, no hot heat, no, no heat. Well, I'm telling you, it was 54 degrees in New York City at 10 o'clock this morning, and by eight, by seven o'clock tonight, it was 10 degrees, mm-hmm. and it was, and they hadn't turned it on yet, and it was freezing in here, and the only room I could hang out in that was warm was this room because of all the equipment in it that produces heat. <laughs> So Amazing. I went, and, and it was just, it was horrible. Um, Marjorie called the 311 number and complained because, you know, there's a law <laughs> that if, if you know, if, if it's cold weather, you it's, I think, 68 degrees or something like that, it has to be, you have to have at least a temperature of 68 degrees in any apartment. And that is the responsibility of the landlords to provide that. And um, here, you know, 10, 10 degrees and we got no heat so you know now you've had some problems out there you josh you had your electricity went out 
Um, Our we internet. Didn't lose elect- we did, I, we at, in my house, we didn't lose electricity. There are a lot of people around who did. We uh, did lose the internet for quite a long time. Um, went out like in the middle of the night. It didn't come back on until a couple hours ago. Yeah. And then, uh, but, you know, we did get a lot of snow, and the winds are still very high. I mean, I can still hear it outside. And yeah. uh, the temperature is very cold. It's like eight or nine below. Um, that, I mean, that's the temperature. That's not the wind chill. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the temperature. So the front of my house uh, is not blocked by anything, and it faces west, yeah. which is where all the winds are coming from. Yeah. So the entire front of the house, all the windows are frozen over. On the inside of the house, the doorknob is frozen like ice, where it keeps condensating and then refreezes and condensating and refreezes. So the, the doorknob's like this fucking big around with ice. <laughs> I have a bunch of towels shoved on the floor to catch all the dripping water. Uh, ice came in under the door. I mean, it's a total fucking wreck. But, I mean, look, it's the way it is. We live in a cold part of the country. I don't know what to mean. You get kind of used to it after a while. but Yeah. But, I mean, I'm here. Sure if, I'm sure if I tried to open my garage door that it would not open uh, with the opener, I would have to physically disconnect that and then try to bust it up and open because I'm sure it's frozen to the concrete. There's no way that it's not. So you're pretty well locked in your house. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah? Well, yeah. do you, do you have I enough? Mean, we could open it if we needed to. I have done it before, but I'll be worn out by the time it's done because it'll take like half an hour. Yeah, are That you... is a big thing that actually happens here is occasionally there are people who can't get their garage door up because like the night before it snowed, it rained all night and then slowly... You know, the temperature kept going and going and going, and then it changed really quick. So, you know, like the seal at the bottom with the concrete and everything is wet, and then the temperature changed really fast, and it'll, I mean, it'll And garages the aren't heated. No, right. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, and, you know, you can't heat the concrete and the ground and all that. So, I mean, that does happen here, especially, mm-hmm. like I said, my house space is west, and there's really nothing that blocks it. There's no house across the street or anything. You know, there's nothing to block straight wind out across you know like a big mm-hmm. open cornfield and all that so uh, i mean the corn's been harvested in that field. i mean there's nothing to block the wind whatsoever so it's uh it's yeah the driveway's all covered how good. bucolic of him and the corn you know <laughs> yeah. i used to live in iowa for for a year yeah. or two yeah same thing oh my yep. god yeah 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 I mean, when we when we built the house, I knew it was going to face west, and I kind of knew it was a mistake, but it was a bigger mistake than I thought, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, the garage is always full of damn dust. I mean, you know, it just it never. It's all. It's always something. Oh, cool Rain it. Beats the house. It just just the way it is. Cool we'll it. Never build a house. Cool before. it, everybody. You've got to be nice, um, because. Oh. <laughs> You don't want to die. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Our yearly, uh, yearly. Um, what is that? Is, is that some booze? Gold bar whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Go hey, Niners. Man. Your buddy's here. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh hey hey, look, Adrian, look who's oh. here. Look. Yeah. Look who's well, here. better put away the booze. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Adrian. Adrian. Who's that? Adrian. Matt. Santa. Why? Huh? That, that, that. I just work at the mall. He's Santa's helper, right? Is he one of Santa's helpers? He's a Santa helper. <laughs> yes, he's Santa's helper. He's not even a helper, Adrian? Fine, I'll go get my paycheck then. <laughs> You can go back to drinking. So you don't believe that Santa? You want to pull on your pull on your beard just to show her that it's real. See, see, see it's a real beard. <laughs> okay, okay Brian, I'll be talking to you later, Brian. <laughs> I got your number. I guess. You gave well, I'll tell you, you did a really convincing job there. Uh, <laughs> you gone? I scared yeah. my door neighbor one time. How, how did, why did she think he was she, he was Santa's helper? No, she does. She, she first, does. She said, first she said, Alan? <laughs> bring her back here. 
I was listening earlier. There was way too much Jew talk, so I had to chime in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But this is a, a yearly tradition with us, actually, right, Kevin? You've Absolutely. Done the, you've done this every year for many, many years now. The last 20 minutes. Well, at last, uh, yes, and I, I was waiting because I was looking at the clock. And I went, oh, yeah, he is about the last 20 minutes because he doesn't want to have to do this for a whole hour. No, it's way too too long and too hot. <laughs> well, and you're lucky. You've got warmth. I mean, I don't know. Here, and here it's warm because I turned on, I have a, a heater here. A, what do you call it? A, a, a radiator. Or as Marjorie calls them, a radiator. <laughs> Uh, because you know heat radiates um, and I turned it on it's two knobs because I never turned this one on but it was just so cold I had to I turned it on for about 20 minutes and I had to turn it off it was so oppressive because this room really gets filled up fast with the hot air and it's been nice and toasty in here but I don't know what it's like in the rest of the house you know, because the whole you day getting a cyclone bomb or bomb cyclones. What is, what is yeah. that? What is that? It means it just means it's fucking cold. Yeah. Now here's somebody who wants to come on called Matt Sheridan. I don't trust him. Ah, oh, bring him on. I'm sure he's doing. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Well, let me see, because I'm gonna just get rid of him real fast. Jeff, tell your son to close his eyes. Okay, everybody, <laughs> close your eyes. If he if he if he jumps in fast, there Matt he is. Sheridan. There's Matt. Are you there, Matt? You, you are there. See, hey, he's Matt. got his clothes on. Uh, uh, where are you calling from, Matt? I'm from Long Island. He's from Long Island. Island. Okay. Sometimes Long lately, Island. lately we don't trust people who we don't know their names, <laughs> and have never called the show before because you know. Uh, they might Matt from the Matt from the chat. Yeah, I'm from the chat. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. oh really? Oh, hi, yeah, Matt. I thought that name sounded familiar. Yeah. 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 I actually called in. Uh, I think Josh was hosting uh, that show one night. And I called, it was like last summer, and I called in. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. Well, that shows you at my age how forgetful I get. It's all right. I'm already forgetful. I'll yeah. Go yeah. Uh, uh, you guys were talking about Christmas movies, and I was just like, oh, let me join in on this one. Yeah, Christmas movie. Well, what Christmas movie do you like? I was going to say, one that no one ever really talks about, I was going to say, is Batman Returns. <laughs> That's the one with uh, Michael Keaton and Danny DeVito as the Penguin and uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh, I see. Does that take place at Christmas? Yeah, it is a Christmas movie. It's oh. a very dark Christmas movie. Did it come out at Christmas? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. But it definitely is a Christmas movie. I was like, I watched it like recently, like two years ago. I'm like, this is a Christmas movie. No one ever talks about it being a Christmas movie, though. Yeah. How about yeah? Uh, how about uh, how about you, um, uh, 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 Santa? Any favorite cr Christmas movies? I don't do movies. Yeah, oh, you don't? <laughs> You're too busy up there at the North Pole, right? Yeah, what, do you, what am I supposed to say? Christmas story? Well, I didn't mention one of my guilty pleasures is Bad Santa with Bob, oh, Billy yeah, Bob absolutely. Thornton. Yeah. yeah, that's one of the best ones. I love <laughs> There's nothing funnier than seeing, under any conditions, Santa being played as a drunk. I mean, that has always been a com comedy gold, you know. Especially uh, the fact like he's always like he's pissed off, angry, drunk, and he's so, such a curmudgeon. It's so funny. Yeah, exactly. Well, in this in this uh, uh, violent night, Santa is just fed up with being Santa. He's it opens up with him in a bar. Uh, I saw that movie theater too. That was brilliant. Getting 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 drunk as hell, and really? just saying, I hate this. I got to stop this. I can't do this anymore. And then he takes off in his sleigh, and this woman runs up to the roof to say to see him, and says, Santa, and he drive goes by and pukes all over her. <laughs> as he's, as he's, <laughs> And I go, I think I got to watch the rest of this. <laughs> you know, this has got to be pretty damn good. You know? <laughs> but uh, what's that one called? Off the right, that down. Violent Night. <laughs> Violent Night. <laughs> yeah, and it's an action film. What what what's it about exactly, Matt? It's uh, it's about a family, like a, a group of wealthy. Uh, it's like a wealthy family, and they meet together for Christmas. And John Luguizamo and a bunch of like, like. Um, 
people uh, uh, infiltrate the party and they want to kill everyone there so they can take the money. And Santa Claus happens to be there at the same time. And he's the one that has to violently kill all the bad guys, like a Tarantino movie. <laughs> <laughs> You like he, he like right before he kills all of them, he says something like, "I'm gonna eat through all these motherfuckers like Santa would a plate of cookies or something." <laughs> <laughs> it may be a classic, you know. Yeah. Maybe one of those kind of films that okay, it does okay now, but then over the years they will bring it back and bring it back and bring it back and go. This is this is comedy gold. Is it, is it pretty much done for laughs? Or is it Oh yeah. Yeah, the deaths are so over the top, but it's it's like it is it's so over the top that you have to laugh at it. Like it is so absurd, but it's like it's entertaining, you know, and like he plays uh like when he violent like not spoiling anything, but like when he violently kills like a bunch of bad guys, they play that uh that Brian Adams song and it talks about everyone coming together for Christmas and he's like chopping heads off and everything. <laughs> so good. Why is it Santa is such comedy gold when you play him as a as a, a, a as a reprobate, as it were, you know? But um, anyway, well. So Matt, you seem very young. How how do you get connected with the show? Yeah, uh, I it was funny. Uh, I remember, uh, I think it was uh, I somehow got involved with um, like I, I was bored. And I just needed a podcast to listen to. I listened to Alan Combs. And then yeah. he died, and then you gave that tribute to him. And yeah. That's somehow how I found you. This is like years ago, but then I was like, oh, it's just pretty yeah. good. So yeah. That's kind of how I just came uh, across the How long has he been gone now? I'd like Three, to. Three four years, maybe? Yeah, four years, five years, something like that. Yeah, yeah. That was really out of a clear, uh, out of the, uh, you know, out of the, out of the blue. We didn't expect that to happen. Yeah, no. I, I always got in. He was way more entertaining on the radio than he was on television because I grew up with him and he was the guy. He was like Hannity's foil. And I was like, he's kind of lame. But then you see him on the radio and oh, my God, he was he was amazing. Yeah, he was like, like he was kind of like dickish. But that's what was his appeal. You know, he was, you know, it's what made it. it was. What do you mean kind of hickish? Of what do you mean hickish? Kind of. No, no, dickish. He was dickish. Kind of a dick, but oh, he was making good points. You yeah. Know? Well, he stole that from me. Oh, he did. Yeah, wow. yeah. I, I, I made a life of being a radio dick, you know. Um, but no, actually, he did steal something from me. But he always admitted it. Uh, quickies, which I used to do, which I think he called it something else, where you just make a quick statement, and oh, then yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a, I think probably it was the like end of the show, kind of like just yeah, like yeah. Well, that's thing. the way I used to end my show in New York every night was with quickies. And uh, uh, quite a few people. Hannity stole it. Mm -hmm. And who else? Somebody else stole it, too. And I can't remember who now. But it got to a point, so many people stole it, but I stopped doing it. And then one day I decided to start doing it again when I went back to Sirius XM because I said, well, why should I give up a good thing just be?" And then, of course, once I started doing it again, everybody went, oh, Alan <laughs> Combs did that. You know. <laughs> But Alan was a terrific guy. Loved Alan. Just loved him. He's he not, like really just not a more a nicer guy you would not meet anywhere, you know. And uh, they always used to ask me on to his show on Fox. And it was, uh, you know, it was nice, you know. And I, I enjoyed it. But that's what you get for putting me on your show. You die, you see. Because, uh, God forbid, Alex should have a regular gig, you know. Uh, but uh, anyway, but then again, I was with uh, Tucker Carlson for a while, and he didn't die. So <laughs> this is when he was on. People don't remember <clears throat> this. Anybody remember T T Tucker Carlson on MSNBC? Yeah, long time ago. Yeah, During the, what probably like I said, the second Bush administration it was probably like oh five, oh six, oh seven. Yeah, yeah. Oh. He was on during the earlier part. I don't think he was too late. I don't think. Well, I used to go on every Friday with him and another guy, and we just used to bat the news around, Yeah, you know. And uh, then uh, then they decided they didn't want to do that anymore. He, he liked it. He thought it was terrific. But it was the people at MSNBC who kind of nixed the thing. So that, that lasted for about, I think it was 10 weeks or something. We did that every week, you know. 
People say, what was Tucker like? And I went, I don't know, he was in New Jersey. I was sitting in like a studio in New York City, you know, so whatever. Did he have that look on his face back then when he like he was taking a crap? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he always had that. It's it's a kind of it's a it's a look of either complete stupidity or wonderment. One or the other. I can't figure out what it is, but Yeah, he uh he had a stick up his ass even then, don't worry. Yeah. Yeah, well, he's he always tried to find a career for himself because you remember he started out over at CNN, uh, where he and I can't remember who it was were uh, at night and just it was like point counterpoint for a whole hour, and and it was the two of them and then uh, they got rid of that's what those were the bow tie days. Is that when John Stewart went on the show and embarrassed them? That I don't remember. That I don't oh. remember. Um, <laughs> But uh, anyway, so, you know, but uh, so uh, we were going to be off for, you know, the week uh, between now and and uh, the new year. We always take the week off. I call it our long winter's nap. And, uh, um, you know, it, so it, it's be, it, since we're not going to have a New Year's show of this show, particularly, some, sometimes I decide at the last minute to go on at New Year's. Um, Anybody have any resolutions at all that they? Well, that's that's it for people not wanting to make good on stuff. <laughs> Pretty know. much. Yeah. We're usually gone by the first or second day. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, it's just going to be broken a week later. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then, but well, now what you do is you just do, uh, you know, things that you can not have to take back and say you didn't get done you know like uh, well i'm resolving this year to get laid i think you know things like that you know that are not in the normal stream of things you know but uh oh man i'm telling you um charlie this yeah. has been a big year for you because you were the uh, official counter of death I'm still counting death. I, I was going to give you a robe and a scythe, you know, because yeah. you kept every night you were coming on with uh, deaths and stuff. Yeah. On, and, and and you actually still to this day post it every night on our on our yeah. um, um, chat. And uh, for instance, do you know, folks, we're up to uh, let's see how many confirmed cases. Um, one hundred million oh, cases. Over a hundred million cases in this country confirmed. And I was one of them. Okay. Of course I didn't get it bad, so but also uh, how many how many that how many deaths? One million ninety thousand one hundred and fifty as of today. Do you remember when Trump was saying, Oh, this'll go away and we were up to yeah, about forty thousand yeah, or something? Weekend. Huh? A million plus later, they're still dying, and it, the, the numbers are going up, aren't they? Yeah, oh, by the way, Happy New Year and a Merry up. Christmas, everybody. What? What are you gonna say? Yeah, it, it, it more than doubled in the last month. Jeez. What? And do you know that they found that seniors who should always make sure they're up to date on their COVID. Uh, vaccinations uh, aren't getting the latest vaccination, the latest booster. And that's Almost just nobody. stupid. Just, you know, if the new one comes out, go get it. For instance, Matt, do you have all your shots? Yes, I do. You have five of them total, right? Yeah. See? Yes. How old are you, Matt? Uh, it fluctuates, but I'm in my 30s. <laughs> in my 30s. You're, you're in your 30s. <laughs> but you've made sure, and you are not in a, in a group that you know, has a high mortality rate where COVID is concerned, but you went out and got them all. You know? Oh, yeah. I, I don't want to get anyone sick, and I want to, like, make sure I don't, like, get sick. And, and you I don't want to get the people around you sick. Yeah, exactly. Well, listen, what we're going to do here now is I'm going to sign off the program, and then uh, I'm going to sign it off like we always sign it off. And you people just stay right there. I'm not going to close down the uh, the, the uh, uh uh, the, the Zoom here, 
and uh, Josh will be taking over and doing his show, but it will take me about a minute, maybe two minutes to get everything going. So just stay there and uh, let me see here. Let me go get the theme song going here so it can be an official closing. I want to wish, uh, well, uh, everybody here a very Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year uh, to Jeff and to his son Andrew and to uh, Josh and to Charlie and to Brian and at least some of my favorite people, by the way. Uh, Kevin, uh, or excuse me, Santa, uh, and uh, of course Matt. You should you should call us more often. This is yeah. very nice. It's nice to have somebody who isn't on the edge of death on this program. You know, <laughs> everybody, give yeah. a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye too. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen yeah. panel for tonight. Let me see here. Let me bring my camera up. Hey, listen. Uh, it's, it's terrific, and I thank you all for joining us. I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. We will see you uh, bright and early on the new year with the, uh, 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 on, on the 4th, I think, with another ramble, okay? Uh, we're taking the week off. In other words, we'll see you then. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, okay, do me a favor. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.